Hello everyone, I'm Aidlui, and today we are going to finish uh, our little proof of concept editor with a couple more things, scene picking and adding the possibility to use the Bevy UI components normally overlaid on the game view. If you don't know about the project, check out Devlog Zero to get a feel of what we are doing here. If you followed along, you should have something like this, all right? You have a hierarchy, a set, a resource browser, and an inspector. They are not completely completed. I mean, uh, we probably need to implement a few, well, some plugins for the inspector to, to display, let's say, images, for instance. But we are not going to do that. Not in this uh, proof of concept setup. In any case, the panels are saved. Our window state is saved. We uh, implemented a little undo thing, so you can undo your changes. Um, it's not perfect, but it works as a proof of concept anyway. And uh, today we are going to add scene picking, so you can actually click and select things from the game view. That and in the game view, I, as I said, I want to at least support or at least find out how to best overlay uh, any uh, Bevy UI. Uh, components here. And to start off, while I was talking about window persistence, there is a little mistake in the window persistence. If you have multiple monitors and one of them has a different scaling, I don't know, 150%, you can drag and leave the window there. And if you close it, works fine. But if you open it, the, the scale will be wrong. Uh, this is because we store the uh, the physical pixel size of the, of the window. But when we restore that size without considering the scaling uh, that it was saved in, the size will be wrong. So you, you will only see that if you have like multiple monitors or a, a, a scaling that's different from 100%. So to quickly fix that, this should work if you have a um, a scaling factor that's not a uh, hundred, uh, or if you, you know, pull it to the other screen and then uh, save it there. That's it for fixing the, the window persistence. Uh, now, the other thing that we uh, want to do, or I want to do today is actually doing the picking. So clicking into the window view should pick up something. And I, I want to, that something to be the, uh, the mesh that's currently under the cursor. All right, there you go. Uh, as you can see, immediately we have the circle uh, in he, here and the readout. This is coming from from the uh, the picking plugin, and you can customize it and probably remove it. But as you can see, all of our meshes are actually you know responding to our pointer. And if we actually look at the component, there is the pickable, and there is the selection, and the highlight. The second thing we, we need to do is do something with it. So here we are, uh, I'm trying to pick something, but I can't pick anything. Yeah, so you do need to uh, do the Raycast adding in update. In any case, we can select it. It doesn't work if you do a short click, but this is a plugin specific thing. So you actually need to hold it and then you can shift select the other one and the other one and the other one. There you go. Now, there is one more issue with this. If I click away, the selection disappears, but the, the hierarchy still thinks uh, that, we, uh, that we are selecting all of those. And if I select another one, yeah, it goes away, but uh, 
we also want it to make, go away at the same time we click away uh, from from anything. Let's uh, select one, two, three, and I'm just clicking away. And then you can see uh, the hierarchy is cleared. So we can do the selection again. And now two of them are selected. Um, you cannot uh, use the gizmos that we have defined so far with multiple selections and move them at once, you know, uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, we probably need to implement like uh, finding the the center of the bounding boxes of all of the selections, all of the selected things, and then you know put the gizmo there and update everything. It's something we need to do. We want to create a, a more generic editor. I won't bother for now, at least. That said, we are good on the selection. And the last thing I want to do as part of this proof of concept is just to make sure I can use Bevy UI components in this environment. And you can immediately see multiple issues here. So first of all, uh, the console is going crazy. And the other one is that we have a gigantic something there, uh, which is probably not what this is supposed to be. So let's close it. Let's resolve the first issue here, uh, which is actually uh, a problem with the camera. So if you look at what they spawned here uh, in this setup, uh, there is a camera 2D bundle. Uh, what you don't see here is setting the order of the camera. We already have one. So if you go to the setup uh, of our library, uh, the first thing we do somewhere should be creating a camera. Or maybe it's the last one. Yeah, there we go. We do create a camera here, uh, which means that uh, as part of our setup, we have two cameras now. And it's possible. It's not a problem. The problem is that uh, uh, both of them have the same priority at this moment and we should make that clear that this is the first one and then that the, that the other one is the other one yeah so we are no longer spamming the console but now we have another issue uh, our game view disappeared and we have this gray thing with the uh the squares here. Um, this is because we render the game view and then we render uh, the uh, the UI on top. But the UI is not transparent, so it, it, there is a there is a, a, a background color to it, uh, which uh, clears actually the uh, the render target. So there you go. Now we have the gigantic squares uh, in, on, on top of our game view. Uh, you can immediately notice another problem. We can no longer pick the background. We are actually picking the Bevy UI component. All right, uh, excellent. Uh, the only thing is that uh, you see uh, we have uh, the right looking thing. Uh, let me just make it a bit bigger. Uh, and then another duplicate right behind it. This is because the 3D camera also renders the UI. There you go. Uh, now we only have uh, the one UI and this is, this is the UI how it should look like, you know, you have the little panel here with the scrolly thing, uh, text example, uh, we don't have the Bevy logo, but if you find yourself that you did not see, if you don't see uh, any of the texts, be sure to grab uh, the, um, the actual font asset. So if you go to assets in Bevy uh, engine, and then you go to fonts, uh, just grab that. 
um, because that's the font that uh, the example uses. Uh, you can find this out if you scroll in the example and find the texts and then you find, yeah, it's right here, the font asset it's using. So in this proof of concept, we have an editor sort of thing. Uh, we can, we, we can uh, look at our entities, uh, look at the components, we see the assets, the resources, uh, we have a game view that we can, uh, you know, interact with, uh, we can select things, uh, move things around, we have the undo functionality. Um, and again, uh, it's, it's all right. That said, I talked more than enough for today. So talk to you later, have fun. And I'm going to uh, create a GitHub page to hold all of the uh, code that we have worked on so you can grab it yourself it's probably the link is already in the description along with all of the resource pages that i use to to put this together so yeah leave a like if you uh, feel like and uh, talk to you soon have fun ciao